Hello friends, this video on data handling part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now that we have discussed quite a bit about data, let us now talk about organizing data. Now, the moment we think of organizing data, the first question that comes to our mind is, why organize data? Why do we even need to organize data? So, let us try to understand the reason behind organizing data using this example. So, what do you see on the screen? You can see a bunch of people, a group of people, a lot of people. Now, we have for, for just for the sake of convenience, we have named them as A, B, C, D, E, F and so on. So, you have so many people and there was a survey which was conducted to know which is the favorite fruit of each one of them. Now, some of them told apple, some told orange, some told grapes. So, different people have different choices. Now, looking at this, whatever is there on the screen, if I ask you, which is the fruit that is liked by most of the people or which is the fruit that is disliked by most of the people? Do you think that you'll be able to answer at once? Is it very easy to answer this question? Now here the data is still lesser because here you only have people from A to R, maybe some 15-20 people. Now if instead of these 15-20 people, you might have a bigger group. You might have a group of 500 people and all of them telling a, a specific fruit as their favorite. So how would you decide? How, I mean, that's difficult, right? Why is it difficult? Because the data that we that we see on the screen right now is all messed up and haphazard. So what do we need to do? We need to organize the data because organized data helps us to interpret the data. The information is obtained easily from organized data. Not only that, here when you look at the screen, you see that there are certain data which gets repeated over and again. For example, apple, the favorite fruit apple. Apple is not the favorite fruit only for A. It is a favorite fruit for D, it is also a favorite fruit for F, it is also a favorite fruit for I and J and L. So there are multiple people who said that apple is their favorite fruit. So here on this in this table we see that apple is a data that is getting repeated again and again. So now we will make use of these things, these small things that we observe here, we will organize them in a better way when we organize the data. So here we talk about frequency distribution table. So that's a, a big, bigger name. Uh, you might be thinking that it's a bigger concept as well. But the concept is pretty simple. In fact, this concept is to, concept is to make our task simpler. So this is the table that we had names of people and their favorite fruits fine now i said that there are certain data which gets repeated over and again now the number of times any particular data gets repeated is called its frequency so for example if you talk about the frequency or the number of times apple is getting repeated what would be the frequency of apple it would be five because it is getting repeated five times so now we prepare a frequency distribution table. Now as the name suggests, this would give the frequency of every data. That is the number of times any particular data or any particular entry occurs. So here when you look at the names of the fruits, now there are certain fruits out of which, I mean like even if there are 200 people, but a lot of them said that the same fruit is favored to all of them. So what you do is you note down the names of all the fruits that exist in that table. So here in this table, we just have four fruits, apple, orange, grapes and mango. And then you look at their frequency. Now frequency of apple is basically the number of people who like apple. That's the frequency, right? A likes apple. So apple is here. Again, D likes apple. So apple is here. So the number of times apple is getting repeated means that these many people said that their favorite fruit is apple. 
So that's how you have noted down their frequency. And this table is known as a frequency distribution table because this table gives you the frequency of each entry. And here the entries are apple, orange, grapes and mango. Now, if I ask you to tell me which is the fruit that is liked by most of the people looking at this frequency distribution table, do you think that you will be able to answer me at once? Of course, because quickly looking at this table, you can see that Apple has the maximum number of frequency and therefore Apple is liked by most of the people. Similarly, mango has the minimum frequency that is it is disliked by most of the people or it is liked by very few of them. So we can say looking at this table instantly that apple is the most liked fruit and the mango is the most disliked one. So what did you observe? Now what different did we do? We just created a new table but this new table is more organized than the previous one. Right in the previous table, we had it, it was like a haphazard table where the same fruit is getting repeated over and again. So we are not able to understand which is occurring more number of times and which is occurring lesser number of times. But now when we make this frequency distribution table, we clearly see that how many times a particular entry gets repeated. So this is the concept of organizing data. So whenever we talk about organizing data, the first thing that we do is we make a FDT that is frequency distribution table. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.